Hello everybody and welcome to another discussion video. We got a bunch new um, Edge of the Earth Investigator and some player card spoilers actually like just two hours before we recorded this day. So I just want to say Fantasy Flight Games, you should always release your live streams at like Wednesday at noon, like noon mountain. It's a perfect time for us. So just that's great because we can talk about it like two hours later when we record. Uh, let's just dive right in and start talking about the cards. First off, we got Monorary Jack. He is our rogue investigator from the edge of the earth. He has one willpower, no surprise, four book, two fist, and five foot. As a reaction, at the end of your turn, if you started this round one location away from your current location, either gain one resource or draw one card. If you started this round two or more locations away, do both instead. His Elder Sign effect is plus one. If you started this round one or more locations away from your current location, gain one resource or draw one card. Uh, his deck building things is exactly as we predicted. He is a rogue that turns into a seeker. Dab alert, we're the best. Uh, so what do you guys think of this guy uh, for his design and his reaction ability? I like him a lot. He, uh, he feels, well, he's basically yellow and best scared, but... <laughs> He feels like an Ursula who, um, is green. <laughs> is like kind of there. Yeah. Uh, at least in my eyes, because you get something. It like encourages you to move and gives you a uh, an action. Mm -hmm. And it's not as valuable as getting a clue is, but it is better than having to take a test to get value out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's extra value. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not too hard to move on your turn. <laughs> uh, and... Especially when you just play stuff like Pathfinder. Yeah, P Pathfinder. And then there's also that, um, there is that, um, Seeker card that, like, Call of the Unknown or whatever it is, the, whatever is the one Truth that, like, seconds. lets you move to a unrevealed Truth location. Seconds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's nice that that kind of has, like, a little spot for him. Bryn, what do you think of Monterey Jack? I love his janky stat line. Yeah. Like, this is a hot mess. <laughs> we got two points in punch. We can never even use it. Yeah. Uh, we got five foot, though. That's how you know we're green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Honestly. No, no I, it's it's a one brain that tells you yeah. that you're green. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's just, that's just another part. <laughs> no, actually, I really like uh, his stat line, too. Like, the two punch is, like, whatever. It's garbage, but... You know, you couldn't give him two brain or five book or else he'd just be insane. Yeah. So um, the yeah. five foot is yeah. partially, it lets you like use things like lock picks. And then the one brain actually is like better or is less of a problem for him than it is for most green vesquiers, I think. Because you still get, um, you can still play, play like a Tennessee mash, the, mm -hmm. the base level one if you want. And you can still play, you handle this one. But then you get like other yellow cards that can higher level yellow cards like eye of truth and uh forewarned if you just like need to crush those brain treacheries yeah i mean like the yellow you, pool gives you a lot of really strong defensive options yeah you could even go like a monterey jack like a harvey walter style soak where you just take the archaeological study and then just have like everyone just take it for you and you're like i don't care you're expendable you're gonna die on this expedition mm -hmm. i think it's uh it seems fun yeah he does seem cool no, he does. He does seem neat. The only the only thing I don't like about him is that with this stat line, we can't play level one lock picks. We've got to play the level zero. So we're always like, maybe they just break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can just play like That's yellow okay. cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we can, you just, can just like play, actually like, play level two yeah. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so That's, pretty, on, that's pretty big. And I'm always happy when Travis gets another. Um, like off yellow i mean but this is like majorly yellow but like it's kind of like it's like off green but like major yellow but i just think this is nice for travis because travis you have to play very little green in this character you're yeah, limited but I to place enough for it to I, i'm happy because it's a yellow character that feels new mm -hmm. uh why don't we look at his bullwhip which is actually startlingly close to I, travis I made this card <laughs> to bull, the bull design that uh just came out on thursday so it's a two cost asset commits for two foot and a wild <laughs> Item, weapon, melee, uh, takes up a hand slot, action, fight. 
This attack uses foot instead of fist. If this attack succeeds, you may exhaust trusty bullwhip to either automatically evade the attacked enemy or deal plus one damage for this attack. Seems sick. That does seem pretty sick. Yeah. And with his built-in card draw, I imagine it's going to be... I mean, he's also yellow. It's going to be easy to find and get online, too. A lot of the good yellow searching stuff is kind of level zero. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you have to spend experience on it. it. Doesn't always feel great, but yeah. But I mean, you still it's can, a card like, that you you don't like need to have though. It's just nice to have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just love how close it was to your design, Travis. You nailed it. Yeah. Sick. All I right. I was also amused by that. Let's move on to Mr. Bob Jenkins. So he is a survivor that turns into a rogue. We've done it again. <laughs> uh, We're from the future. <laughs> uh, he has two brain, four book, three fist, three foot. Uh, and at any time, an investigator location may reveal to you the item assets in their hand. Uh, you may take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to play an item asset from the hand of an investigator at location <laughs> under their control. Both investigators may spend resources to pay its cost. Its Elder Sign effect is plus one for each item asset you control. He's a 6-8. Travis, we briefly were talking about him before we started recording. I'll let you start what you think of Mr. Bob Jenkins. He's pretty cool. I like that he has four book. I like investigators who have good book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's nice that they've managed to kind of shoehorn the two brain there, so he still feels like a green character. Yep. Um, yeah, like one of the things I'm not sure I like about this is there's a, a little bit of concern that uh, too many of the green and red cards will focus on this very niche archetype and won't see much play outside of it. Mm hmm. But uh, hopefully end up with Preston where it's kind of like 50-50. Yeah. Um, but generally it is cool and I like it. This is what we've kind of like, we've always talked about this as like our theory for the ally. Like uh, Charlie Kane does this with allies, right? Mm -hmm. Or like even that Charlie Kane can buy cards for other people. Um, I think at this point now I'm pretty confident that because they're not doing repeat designs, Charlie Kane's going to be something completely different. Like he's going to be a literal vampire hunter. Like that's his ability printed on the card. <laughs> um, but I think this is a real, because as we've talked previously, this is an archetype I've really wanted to play. Um, the buy things for your friends archetype. Uh, and Travis brought up an excellent point where how you can't go too hard on that archetype because it um, means that other people... Like, you see, either someone has to play it, or it's useless in solo. And I think the design of this Bob Jenkins is not too, like, crazy strong. Um, because, you know, it's just an extra action to play an item asset, and you still have to spend and pay money and all that. But it also works well on just Bob Jenkins if he's not there helping anyone. He's just being a greedy SOB. I think it's sweet. I, I do hope that the they make... I hope they don't lean too much into the sharing of resources with other people, so that way you're just like a resource bot mm -hmm. and who investigate sometimes. I hope that they just fill up the investigator pack with a bunch of like just garbage, random items, and you just play the crap. Would you like a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to just me, like garbage, single, and like limited use items that you cycle through. I think I would. I think that would be a fun playstyle. Yeah. I also think that. Um, when you're building Bob Jenkins, you should look at this more as that um, your your ability card is essentially just to help give an extra action for people to play items. Don't you don't want to help them too much. You can, but I think it's just I think you have to kind of be greedy with Bob. But this is just like me theory crafting. Um, yeah, I mean his personal weakness is called greed. Yes, yeah. which yeah, what's, yeah. What, you got you got it. Let's move on to that. So. Shrewd Dealings is unique. It's a two-cost asset. Commits for two book and a wild. In his deck only, reduce the cost of each item asset you play by one. As a reaction, when you play an item asset, play it under the control of any investigator at your location. So hopefully, Travis, Pretty we can sweet. get this uh, uh, vacuum cleaner type thing. <laughs> yep. And you just give your stuff to other people. Um, yeah. Yeah, don't have much to say about that one. one hey, second. can you go back to his previous card yeah. for a second? Yeah, I was wanting to go back to read his ability and if that worked for if you played other people's cards, but it looks like you do. I'm, I'm sad that you can't... I don't think you can play a card from your hand and give it to someone else on the condition that they pay for it. 
you can't <laughs> actually sell your cards to them. So, reduce what? the card. not? Because you have to play an item asset from the hand and investigate your location under their control, and both investigators may spend resources to play its cost. Ah. So, if you're like playing the card from your hand, that's not both. There's no other investigator. Yeah. Because you're not playing it from their hand. So, you can't make them pay for it. Yeah. Are they not an investigator at your location, though? Um, but. Yes, but it stipulates that you have to play it from their hand. Yeah. So when you're playing a, an, an item from your hand, you're both mm, investigators. Yeah, 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 no, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, like, it's, it'd also be kind of dumb. Yeah, to really do the. I'm, I'm not paying for anything. You're buying from me. <laughs> uh, his personal weakness is greed, which is take one horror. If you have 10 or fewer resources, take one additional horror. Five or fewer resources, take one additional horror. Or zero reses, resources, take one additional horror. So if you have no money, you take four horror on this. So that's like that's kind of a lot of horror, but he's got eight. So yeah, um, yeah. And uh, you can play like a lot of liquor. Yes, you yeah. can. Yeah, so yeah. much liquor. <laughs> he's holding it in his card. Right? You can have a even just like um, just. It's just one of those things, to me, this is the scariest card I've ever seen in my life. Because I think Dark Horse Bob Jenkins, is it a bad decision? First off, probably yes. <laughs> he is an item-dependent investigator. Um, but I just... Uh, you just uh, play a time card, draw it, you bank 100% on getting shrewd dealings. And then all your items cost one. Yeah. Oh, there we go. It costs zero. Look at that. Boom. And I think you'll find a way to make it work. Yeah. Maybe. Sick. All right. Uh, Lily Chan, we got her backside. She is a Mystic Turn Guardian. We nailed it again. I yeah, think... she can't play guns. Whatever. Her her arms, her fists are her guns. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the thing yeah. Yeah, that Bryn said. For every 15 experience you earn, you may choose to add a different discipline into your deck. So I think they spoiled two more. We got the... Uh, Quiescence of Thought. This is, uh, you get plus one book. If you have fewer than five cards in your hand, draw cards until there are five in your hand, then flip this asset over. And then after the round ends for the broken side, uh, if you have two more cards, if you do not have two more cards and at any point this round, flip this asset to its unbroken side. So if you had only holding one card, you can bring it back over. Uh, Still above my pay grade currently for Lily Chan. I'm like, yeah, this all seems really cool, but like too many choices. I just want Pete Sylvester in my deck. I know how to do that. That's easy. Bryn, what do you think of this discipline? I think that's uh I think this one opens up some interesting possible deck building where you play like a giant pile of events. Mm -hmm. And you just, you know, you toss them at every problem for the slightest provocation at any opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm at skills. Yeah. Or yeah. skills, yeah. And uh, then you just reload your hand. Yep. For an action. Like right. if you're if you're ever drawing four or five cards for the action, there's no downside to having the well, I shouldn't say no downside, but there's minimal downside to having this having it broken. Like yeah. you're probably not really using your book for much anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So this, uh, this is just like, like skill event, um, Lily yeah, Chan. I mean, you could right. be if you're very heavy on the. Like, you feasibly could be if you're very heavy on the skills. Mm -hmm. If, like, you devo you're devoting your purple level zero slots to stuff like Prophesy and Practice makes perfect. And then from blue, you get, like, Take the Initiative and. Um, daring. Daring doesn't work for investigating. Oh, yeah, you're talking about it. Works, it works like Take the Initiative. But if he wanted to investigate, he could. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Then we got uh, Prescience of Fate. So this is plus one fist. As an action, you get plus five skill value for the next test you perform this turn. After that test ends, flip this asset over. Uh, this action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. And the broken side is after this round ends, if you perform no skill tests this round, flip this asset over to its unbroken side. Plus it's a shame she can't play the shotgun. <laughs> Probably why, or part of why. But you know, you just you pick this one and you let it sit and play and be punch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This this one, like I think the yeah the plus the plus one punch is the big part. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 
also you know if you need if you need a skill test to succeed yeah. it'll do that too yeah probably well yeah i mean like if plus five doesn't make you succeed you're probably playing on a very high difficulty yeah you got real unlucky yeah or yeah or your brain and you do the auto fail yeah, or if you showed yeah. up and your two other teammates are playing curse decks and they're like <laughs> <laughs> Was that picture of like that meme of like, the lead? um the uh, the Spider Man villains like Goblin like Doc Ock Rhino and they just have those smiles on their faces? That's Travis and I playing a curse deck when Bryn brings this card to play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, I think now we have some player cards, which are always exciting. We have twenty one or bust. This is a two cost event that commits for a foot and a fist. It's a fortune and a gambit. One at a time, reveal random tokens in the chaos bag until you choose to stop. Treat each skull, cultist, tablet, or squid as a five. The uh, <laughs> sorry, the auto fail is a ten, and the elder sign is either a one or eleven. If the combined value of total tokens, ignoring plus minus, is eighteen or less, gain four resources. Nineteen gain five. Twenty gain six. Twenty one gain nine. Whoa! I didn't read any of these cards. Like so, this is cool. <laughs> this is this so is how the, this is how this is how Henry Wan should have functioned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, it's just I fun. don't. I'm not going to evaluate this card. Uh, someone will put a post on the subreddit, explain the math behind it, and they will tell me if it's good or not. <laughs> you, you say someone has or someone will? Someone will. Someone yeah. Because, like, if yeah. you can't consider. So, like, it's not worth it unless you're consistently or, like, somewhat consistently getting the 20, right? Because, like, if you're not consistently going for the 20, then like 20 or 21, just play emergency cash. Yeah. Because then you just get the money. Yeah. <laughs> but Travis, you get a gamble. You get a play. <laughs> you do get a gamble. No, I understand the appeal of the card. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I agree, though. I think this card's more fun I than it is good, but man, does that sound fun. Yeah, especially with the initial investment. I mean, like, you have to. I mean, if, no, if you bust, you don't get anything. Yeah. So just don't bust. That's that's the logic, yeah. right? And just don't fail. Uh, Bryn, are you gonna play this card? At you least play one, a ceiling deck right? and use it to fund your protective incantations. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna play this I'm gonna play this card at least once, if only to try and make Travis mad. <laughs> You're gonna play it for one campaign, get negative money off in debt, and then just be, be angry and never play it again. No, yeah. no, yeah. It's okay. yeah, I don't need money for things. I will say it'll be fun to revisit some of our like dumb deck building decks, like the gambling ones, and just be like, it's time. We've done it. All right. Next up here is we got Untimely Transaction. This is a zero cost, one experience favor event that commits for a wild. Uh, reveal an item asset in your hand. Another investigator at your location may play that asset as if it were, were in their hand. If they, drew, if they do, draw one card and gain resources equal to that asset's printed cost. This card's like so you're actually selling it to your to your teammate but you can reveal it and they'll just be like i don't want to play it <laughs> and then you get nothing <laughs> yeah yeah that's true oh, that's funny <laughs> just like no i don't i want the money on that you're like damn it <laughs> my I, one I think, experience is, my one cool. card <laughs> yeah you want a, you want like, tennessee Sarbash? no Huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so, I, I guess my turn's no, done. I think I, I think this card. Is, so like, there's a card in the game called "You Owe Me One." Yeah. This is more like that than uh, "You Owe Me One," oh, which is just taking one of your opponent or one of they're not even your opponent because you're playing on the same team. Yeah. You take one of their cards, <laughs> and they just don't get to play with it now. Um, how, uh, Leo Leo Anderson, he can do green level one, right? Yeah, he gets zero to two. So, so you can get someone else to pay your play your gun for you. So he could sell Lily Chen a shotgun. He could yeah. sell Lily Chen a shotgun. <laughs> oh, there we go. You know. Look at that. Yeah, like I think this card's really good if you're willing to like cheat a little bit. Yeah. But as it is where you just have to like within the rules how you're supposed to play and you're just supposed to like guess if they want it or not yeah 
<laughs> it's kind of garbage. <laughs> I agree. This is very much one where you go in and it's like when Brynn and I play Lord of the Rings and he runs green just so I can play Asphaloth, right? You're, yeah. you're building it as a group to give, to do things that you normally can't do in the game, which is kind of fun, but I don't think it's as exactly as you say, like the intention of the card of just selling. I just love that. Hey, do you want to buy this? No? Uh, all right. <laughs> sure. I have some experience on this. Yeah. <laughs> This is also like a level one. This probably could have been a level zero card if you didn't like draw the card to replace it or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's level one, so that way uh, Bob Jenkins can play it. Yeah, it's it's level one because Bob Jenkins. Yeah, but could if he was if he didn't have that deck, maybe level zero. I bet. Yeah. yeah. All right. Last two cards. It's always sad when we have to stop talking, but we got the red clock, broken but reliable. This is a two cost, two experience, exceptional item relic asset that takes up the accessory slot. Commence for a wild. Forced. After your turn begins, either place one charge here or take all charges here as resources. Then, if it has exactly one charge, you get plus three skill value for the next skill test. If it has exactly two charges, you may move up to two times. If it has exactly three charges, you may take an additional action this turn. That's sweet. This is being like super good for bob jenkins but it's like really really good for ursula mm -hmm. like it, it's good does take yeah. up accessory slot does cost four experience and you can only play one no i'm excited for that mm -hmm. play this in all my decks it is like just a good card Yep, buy Relic Hunter so that I can still have my Crystallizer. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, this doesn't do anything like particularly flashy. It's just like a solid card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gives you money or it gives you a nice other benefit. Seems cool. Or other things. Yeah. And money later. Uh, this is a really cool thing for Dr. Ellie to hold. Yep. Uh, yeah. She's happy when she finds it because that means she's sticking around. Yeah. <laughs> Guess you don't have to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair. Yeah. What uh, what relic did you bring on the expedition? I brought the red clock. Good choice. <laughs> oh, good choice. I brought something that you want to keep. Yeah. I see. <laughs> Sick. Hmm. Uh, last card we have here is Schaffner's Catalog. This is a two-cost item tome asset that commits for a book. Oh, because it is a book. Uses five ah. secrets. If Schaffner's Catalog has no secrets, discard it. You may spend secrets on Schaffner's catalog as resources to pay for item assets played by any investigator at your location. This is like a Bob Jenkins card, obviously, but it's also a uh, what's her face? Minty fan card, because you won't be on people's locations anyway. Mm -hmm. And also your cards cost a million, and yep. it's got secrets, so you can play like, you can use Elder Sophist, like Forbidden Tome, to turn these into, turn your Forbidden Tome into real money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To play for better cards. Seems sick. If your name it's is a William Yorick. It's also a card for Parallel Daisy. It does seem really good for Will Yorick, too. Yeah. Yeah, you as just long as you run this out here and you're like, let's play more knives and guns and crap and then it discards itself and you kill a man and you're like look more catalog inside this man yeah oh yeah like it's it's an yeah. emergency cache with a slight upside mm -hmm. oh significant upside if you're will york <laughs> i mean like it's slight up upside net because it has an initial investment cost of too many right yeah yeah but you get to play it like three times if you want to yeah no i'm Yes, it is very good. Well, you are talking about the card in general. I, yeah. I think you guys are both saying the same thing, just in like different ways. Uh, my favorite part of the card is the four birds That's reading the magazine lot. with her. That sounds like a good Saturday morning. Lots of crows on Survivor cards. We yeah. love our birds, Travis. Yeah. This this also seems solid for a, a parallel daisy. Like it's yeah, the Travis first home saying. I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a tome that wasn't already within the purview of her cards that I'd want to play. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is, like, so, like, you can play um, 
that stupid book of Psalms now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that said that I'd want to play, didn't I? <laughs> book of Psalms is a fine card. All right. Well, everybody, those are the Edge of the Earth spoilers that were released on Wednesday. I hope you're having a fantastic Sunday. What do you think of the cards and uh, all the new investigators that were spoiled on that stream? I'm looking forward to these new cards. I think it's going to be a good time. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you all very soon. Have a good one, and as always, GG's.